top boxing uh, promoter Ben Shalom alongside Spencer and alongside uh, Dara McAntony and myself this Thursday lunchtime. We're talking, of course, about the amazing fight on Sunday night, Fraser Clark, Fabio Wardley, which was a boxer event. Actually, an interesting number of messages coming in, Ben. I'll select one. The atmosphere on Sunday night sounded absolutely amazing. I listened to it on the radio. Can you imagine what the atmosphere would be like again if Fury or AJ chose to fight here? <laughs> I mean, this is where again all the time, Ben. This is coming over all the time. Here, it's got to be here. Look, I will say what what they're doing over in Saudi is 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 incredible, and we're seeing fights that we'd otherwise not see and aren't commercially possible and just wouldn't happen. But of course, a fight like that between two British guys, mm-hmm. there's nowhere better to to box on 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 planet Earth. I don't mm, think no. than, than yeah. in the UK. Would yeah, you yeah. Would you take the dough from Saudi? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> when. Nice one, Dara. Uh, every, everybody's got a price, I, I think, would say. Yeah, I think absolutely. Ultimately, as I said, we've never had boxing so good mm-hmm. and we've never had fights so easily made. Yep. I think the fights that can't be made now, of course you'd want Saudi assistance with sure. it because look at what they're doing. But I do agree with Jim. When there's fights like Wardley Clark, mm-hmm. when there's fights like Boatsy Yard or React Poor Chris Bill and Smith, the, the, the British grudge matches, you want to make them here and but, you want to make them But let's not kid ourselves. Reasons. If the Saudis wrote a cheque for that rematch from the two lads we saw on Sunday night, of course. you'd be on an airplane with them of tomorrow. Of course, of course. But it would be the fighters. It would be the fighters taking the The British most public of the and all of the atmosphere. It would be the fighters the taking most of the cheque. <laughs> there are many people listening who are enjoying your direct line of questioning, Sorry. which is absolutely... Not, listen, no, you are, no you are. Of course you're right. Of course uh, you're right. Yeah, ben, yeah. ben can certainly cope with that and more. One fight... Many people would love to see, and you know what's coming here, Mr. Shalada, is Anna Mazim, your fighter, against Dalton Smith. Uh, Dalton Smith, of course, can do no wrong, nor can Adam Azim right now. Dalton Smith was in the studio uh, just the other day, and he was talking about the prospect of facing Azim. I've said I want to get to the end of my career on all the traditional belts. I've got mm-hmm. the English, I've won the British Commonwealth. The only two I need to win now is a European and a world title. So, you know, of course, it, it'd be nice to win the European. Adam Azim's a champion. That's that's why it makes sense there. But, of course, we need an answer whether, you know, Adam's going to take the fight or vacate. Like I say, it's nothing personal between me and Adam. Boxing's a business. And if I want the European title, Adam's the champion. But you can't sit there and be like, and not give us no answers. You either take the fight or you vacate the t- title. Adam needs more fights. It's not it's not the right time for him right now. And and like I say, I don't want to speak and be disrespectful on Adam because he's shown me respect and he's a respectful guy. But boxing's a business, and when there's something there, what I want to win and go go out and achieve, you've got you've got to be outspoken about it. So that was Dalton Smith saying he wants it. That the boxing public would want it. So let's deliver it. Now, since then, Adam Azim, Ben Shalom's fighter, has relinquished his European super lightweight title after being mandated to face Dalton Smith. So the fight now isn't going to happen. And Eddie Hearn, Dalton Smith's man, had his own reasons as to why. You can sugarcoat what you want. Adam Azim has ducked Dalton Smith. I mean, we had the official notice today from the EBU that he's relinquishing his belt. And you can try and dress it up with fights that haven't been made yet and other fights that can be made. And, you know, one minute, Adam's only 21 and Dalton's 27, but Harlem Eubank's 30 and, like, the whole thing's a load of really. The fact is, you're not good enough to fight Dalton Smith. You know you can't beat Dalton Smith. It's absolutely fine. We could have avoided all this. And and you can talk about we're a a victim of the game and they don't want to work with us. I mean, it's absolute rubbish. Like, you've only got to look at the facts. You know, when we were working with Fabio Wardley and the Fraser Clark fight was ordered, they pulled out of negotiations in the purse bid. Um, They've just done it again with Azim and Dalton Smith. When Richard Riakpour got ordered to fight Jay Pattaya for the world title, they pulled out of the fight and they pulled out of negotiations. When Caroline Dubois got ordered to fight against Beatrice Ferreira, for the world title, they pulled out of the fight and they pulled out of negotiations. And now Chev Clark is mandatory to Isaac Chamberlain. They won't even mention his name. In fact, when he went in to get in an interview, they cut the feed. And you can say, you know, people are working against us and people are just, like, again, the proof is in the pudding. You've got five brilliant fights there and every one they haven't been willing to negotiate or to be in. 
So Ben, Eddie Hearn says you lot have got form here that you pull fighters out of potential fights um, on a regular basis. What do you want to say to that? I think, obviously, it was, it was it was good to listen to that. I think, personally, look at the Fraser Clark, Fabio Wardley situation. The amount of grief, the amount of attention, the amount of scrutiny that that decision came under... And then we sat here after a night like Sunday and it's quite obvious. That speaks for itself. My duty is to my fighters. Anyone in boxing, any ex-boxer, knew that was a good decision when it happened. Didn't have to wait for Sunday night to see, oh my God, that was a gruelling fight. That was 12 rounds. Thank God yeah. Fraser Clark had had a bit more experience because otherwise he might not have known where he was at sure. fitness-wise. Anywhere, anywhere. But why are we not going to see Adam Azim, your man, in the, in the same, Dalton in the Smith, same his way, man. in the same way, like Dalton said, it has to also be the right time for Adam Azim. And Adam Azim, when he weighs up the options on the table, has a potential Eubank fight. And I ask all the listeners on here today, sometimes you, we have to create a superstar and we've got a decision to make. Do we choose a Eubank or do we choose Dalton Smith? Don't get me wrong, both tough fights. Dalton Smith, a tougher fight. Do you think there's more chance he loses to Smith? I think at this stage in his career, it's the, it would be the wrong decision. Okay. I'm not saying he wouldn't win right now, sure. but in three or four fights' time, as we've seen with Fraser Clark and Fabio Wardley, both fighters are earning a huge amount more money. Sure. It's a much bigger fight. Okay. And not only was Fraser Clark thankful for what happened on Sunday night, so was Fabio Wardley. And so... Yeah. So you're talking about Harlem Eubank next for... for uh, yeah, but we want to make... Adam just Azim. to be clear, we do want to make fights with Matchroom. We've had Tyler Denny go over there and he's about to fight Felix Cash. We had... When was the last time you sat with Eddie Hearn? I've never sat with Eddie Right, Hearn. and this is what drives me mad about all you guys because you I love never, boxing. You never sat with him. And, and I, know, I know Eddie's upset because you're having this fling with Sky yeah. and obviously you never want to see your but, ex end up with someone yeah. else. But the way I put it this way, you're all the bosses. Yourself, Frank... Obviously, and there's a lot of kids involved, sons and everything else. Why don't any of you guys ever sit together? Because surely that's beneficial for you guys, your fighters. They're now doing it. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. you look at that and go, I need to get at that table. Look, well, we, Eddie and Frank sit look, together now. That's what I mean. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, I yeah. think that's the Saudi, Saudi investment. That's the Saudi investment. But let's, let's be absolutely clear about that. Go on. We, of course, would sit down. We've tried to from the start. I think the difficulty we've got, you look at Adam Azim, mm -hmm. Ben Whitaker, Fraser Clark, Caroline Dubois. They're developing their careers on sure. the biggest platform. Great statement. So they're not just becoming fantastic fighters. Mm -hmm. They're becoming celebrities. They're becoming stars. They're becoming every other fighter in the division mm -hmm. is looking through the shop window saying, I want a piece of that and I want it as early as possible. And so our job is to make sure they become the stars, mm -hmm. fulfill their potential, make the absolute maximum amount of money that they can make and take the fights right at the so right time. Ben, who not told take Adam Azim not take to relinquish his not title? Take risks. Not take not, risks. Yeah. It's not about taking risks. Not Azim? take a... a, a was, it, was it you or was it him? Was it his decision to relinquish his title? It's the McGuigans and it's our decision that we make as a team and we sit down and we have to look... We Anyone, as I say, in that boxing circle can see... Harlem Eubank is the right fight for Adam Azim. Commercially, it's the right fight. From a boxing development, it's the right fight. From where he's at in his career, it's the right fight. Let me ask you I, a serious question. Would you have asked... I'm a big Canelo fan. I think he's one of the best of all time. Would you have asked Canelo not to have fought Mayweather when he was 22? The fight he lost early on. Would this I is what you're saying to the, me. As his promoter, you're trying to protect him. It's not, the right it's, not, it's, not, it's not just about protection. Would you it's also about fight? money. Would you right? have stopped him in that Mayweather... Mm -hmm. Brought a huge amount of money to the table sure. for Canella. But you talk right? about and, and, yeah, no, and, and, and took yeah. him to the next level. Yeah. You're talking about a fighter that hasn't got, a, and a, no disrespect to Dalton Smith, because I, I think he's a phenomenal fighter, mm -hmm. that hasn't got the profile of Adam Azim, that Adam Azim's not getting any bigger off, that is it's actually the other way around. Sure. Of course, looking up, you want the biggest names. That's what elevates you in boxing. Mm -hmm. And that's why I go back to fighting a Eubank. For all the listeners here today and on Sky Sports and Eubank Senior, is going to take Adam Azim to superstar I, level, okay. superstar levels. Yeah, I think not, go, not looking down in a profile sense and fighting a very tough fight very, very early on in his career. But ben, you, you would underline this fact for us this lunchtime, or would you? 
that you've got no problem doing business with Hernan Absolutely Mashburn. Absolutely not, and we'd love to. And I, 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 you I never duck them. I challenge them. Have you ducked them? I challenge them. We would love to sit down all at the table. But in and the see past, have you ducked them? It's never been to do with matchroom or the platform. Fraser Clark not fighting Fabio Wardley was to do with Fraser Clark having six fights and only f- f- fight having four or six rounder. Nothing to do with matchroom. Jim, I think that. he's about a two-year. Eddie, Eddie Hearn's on drive later this afternoon. Mm. Sorry, Spencer. He's going to be on drive. Think about it, Ben. What message do you want to say to him before he goes on drive this afternoon? I Look. I think he, he knows what he's doing because he's a smart guy and he's a boxing promoter himself. And when you've got in, in, in our position, he would do exactly the same thing because he, well, I hope he would. What I would look at is Jordan Thompson, who was slung in against Jay Opataya, and I don't like to throw stones, but what's you- that done for his career? You know, you can talk about giving fighters opportunities. He hasn't even fought at English title level yet and I will not cash out even though it might be beneficial for me from a financial point of view, someone that's believed in me, someone that's that's been with me from debut, early on in the career, we're not going to cash them out for no re- for something that's not in their interest. Dalton Smith against Adam Azim, just like Wardley Clark was, will be one of the biggest fights in British boxing, and it will sell out an arena and possibly be pay per view, and they'll all, they'll earn five or six times the amount they're about, they, they would earn in the next fight, and and I think that's it. Sorry, what's the message to Eddie? Let's sit down, let's make some fights. We should get them on the show together. Sit down, negotiate across the table. Needs to happen. That's the one.